welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. But this morning, I want to minister a little while. Don't let them have what they should not. How many of y'all know sometimes we let people have what they should not have? Now, I'm not talking about gifting them. I'm not talking about overpaying them. I'm not talking about those things. But sometimes people just uh, uh, spiritually interlope into our lives and do different things, can you say, I mean, than, than what God wants to do in our lives. And sadly, you know, uh, uh, people, life, the devil, you know, old Satan, they, they'll take whatever, and it really doesn't matter what he takes from you as long as he can devalue whatever it is. Now, he don't care if he takes this little old thing. He don't care if he takes the whole, the whole basket. He doesn't care about that. But if he can just deframe something, take it, make it look bad, make you feel bad, or start get, uh, get you to the place where you will not and cannot look like the father's son or daughter. I mean, you know, that's what he wants to. You know, uh, you know what it'll do? The world, life, and the devil, whenever they get hold of things that they ought not have, they begin to exercise power over our life. So you don't know, you really, sometimes people come and say, oh, here he comes with that attitude. Wait a minute, now don't let them exercise that power over your life. You know, sometimes you let, how I many of y'all sometimes we let people do things? We let things happen. It really wasn't that bad, amen. You know, it's kind of like going the wrong way. You ever drove the wrong way? And then whenever you start back, it seems such a long way back. It wasn't about a mile and a half, but it seemed like it was so far back and has wrecked the trip. <laughs> you know, but, but we got to make the choice. And only you can do that. Can only make the choice to get back what belongs to us from anybody or anything. Now that's living or dead. I said, get back everything the enemy's taking from you, living or dead. I don't care who they are. You know, how many of you believe you can do that? You know, some things are just plain stolen from us. Some we gave up, some, some we gave up with attitude, some we gave up because of. But some of that stuff was just plain stolen from us. And when anybody or anything comes to that place to start exercising power over us, in many cases this happens so long, people do not even identify it's happening. Come on. You know, when I, you know how many of you know this becomes an unseen power? You know, that, that the enemy has. And when... I say it's unseen, it's kind of unknown. I don't really believe that would be the devil in that. don't really believe the enemy in that. really don't believe that those see that. You know, what we need is our spiritual eyes open that we might obtain and receive, keep, call back, or whatever what belongs to us. Amen. You know, you can take your power back if you want to. You can take, you can take your feelings back if you want to. You can, you can take your future of hope back if you want to. You know, if you live in faith of the Word of God, how many things are possible? We're talking about all things being possible. But you've got to be willing to take back some things that people have taken from us. People, life, no matter what they are, it don't matter. It don't matter to me if it's, if it's a religion. It just don't matter to me, you know. You know, uh, myself and others uh, uh, thought for years, like you, uh, they didn't get anything. Uh, uh, they didn't steal anything from me. But let me tell you, me and some other people truthfully thought that they didn't take it. But the older I got, I found out what they done. I found out how they made me feel. I found out some things that didn't come from the Father. You got to find out how your design is. You got to find out what God wants for your life. And when anything, anybody, life, the devil, the world, even your neighbor tries to take it from you, you have to stand on what the Word of God says. Let me tell you, he'll tell everything. You, you know, that what we say, we, we always misquote. We say the devil come to kill and destroy. No, the devil come to steal. See, if he can steal your peace, steal your joy, steal your hope, steal your word, steal your correctness, steal what the Father, come on. You know, I asked that one day. I, just, I hadn't come up with that. When the, when the enemy comes in and takes the seed of the word of God and takes it and leaves with the foul there, what does he do with it? Well, I guess it gets hot in his feet and he turns it loose. I don't know. <laughs> but I definitely tell you, he can't control it. He can't have it. He can't use it. The trick is to get it away from you. Get it away from me. Amen. And you know, I, you know what they do? They begin to have influence and in things in our life. Sometimes we let the wrong things have the wrong influence in our life, you know. You know, uh, most things that people have, like, you know, in, in life and, uh, and the devil, you know, you, people really don't see when he's tricked, how many of you know deception is just that? You don't see it, amen. 
You don't know that's where it is. You don't really understand that's how you started that frame of thought. You know, people raised in racism and, and, and wouldn't know. Now think, you know, you could take a, a, a black child and raise him in a white family and teach him to be racist. That stuff's learned. All that stuff's learned. And a lot of that stuff about the way you feel about yourself that's wrong, that's learned stuff. You got signals and listened to people and you embraced it. And we didn't listen to what God said about us. Look in Psalms 139. I'm going to start about the 13th first. I'll read through 16. I will read out of the Amplified and save you time. I mean, out of the Amplified and save you time. But you know what we need? You know, from the very beginning, God has designed you in the womb to be who you are and what you shall be. But sometimes we never get to the place of the God designed us because we've been formed by people and opinions and all kind of sort of things. God knows your design. Let me tell you, whenever you get in your life and, and you don't know what's, uh, what's going on with your life and what God really wants, ask your designer. How many of y'all know God's your designer? He's made each and every one of us individual, unique. Oh, we have some similarities, but what were unique? Psalms 139 is 13. He said, for I formed you in the innermost parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. And I will give thanks and praise unto you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderfully are thy works. And my soul knows it right well. My frame was not hid from you when I was being formed in secret. <laughs> Come on. Intricately and skillfully formed as an embroidery of many colors. In the depths of the earth, your eyes seen my unformed substance. And in your book were all written. The days were appointed for me. And when you yet were yet there, there's not one of them even taken shape. He said, you, you had a plan for me before any shape. He said, you, you see me in a secret place. He seen me in my mother's womb. He said, and you designed me. Now, he can't do this for David and not do it for you. He's telling us now, David's giving testimony. He's telling us what God is. God's secretly doing a work inside us. And if you're not careful, the world will do a secret work inside of you. See, the devil's always got a phony baloney. Of the real thing. And the devil got a false anointing. The devil got whatever. We don't want to glorify him. But he said what it is. He said he like he embroidered me in many colors. He knew exactly. He said you writ me. You written. I'm written in the book. What you've done and how you want me to be. You wrote it down. See God's done written down what he wants you to be. And how he wants you to be. So you got to understand. So what would that be? What would be the right down in the book? The right down in the book would be in his book. He, be, he wouldn't come up with something different for you. and then He's going to come up with his word. For every word is tried from the mouth of the Lord. If he's gonna, what is the will of God? The will of God is his word. What would he write down about you? His word. What would, he, what would you be a victor? Be vic, have victory in? And because of his word. He said, like, we're not real careful. Come on. You know, you got to know in whom you belong. And we're going to go through a few steps. We won't get many of them today, maybe get a couple, but, but we'll get a couple today. But the first thing you got to do is be willing to see what it is and be willing for God to work in your life and have some change. Can somebody say amen? You know, you got to understand he has a plan for me. I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, like, no, he don't mean like fearful, scared. He means fiercely. You know, God, ooh, let me do this right. Let me get in there. He said, now let me tell you, don't get God mixed you up in genetic failure, another thing. Let me tell you, gene genetic failure is not what, what, what represents God. Genetic failure is a result of the sin pool. Man was always made straight up. He never had any problems. Come on. Since he'll sin corrupted. Can somebody, somebody say amen? You know, fearfully and wonderfully, you know, God's been working it out. And he knows, you know, I was never hid from God. Some of, you know, people think when they do things and get away from God, you're not hid from him. If you want something to happen, he's not hid from him. But the counter ship, counter ship, I didn't say that. It almost didn't come out right, amen. Counterfeit leadership. And when you mix them together, you come up with something else. Uh, people, life, and the world, and the devil uh, do it without us knowing it. You know, it's like forming a young vine. You can take a young vine 
and you can just form it like that, you know. And it'll never know it's being taken down. A little more stress and it goes down. It don't know. You know what it does? It just keeps still being vibrant. It's just growing. But it's being formed according to what somebody else wants. Amen. You see, if you're not careful, life and your past and all you've been through will form you. The devil and, and the media and all those people will form our ideology, what, they, what people think. I can talk to people, you know, because I do do that. <laughs> not just church folks. I, I talk to them, and I can listen to them, and I, I can listen a little while and know they watch CNN. <laughs> I can listen to them, and I can tell they watch CNN. Amen. By the way, they talk by what they say. Amen. You know what, what it is gently forming us? Whenever it does that, it doesn't put the strip. And it happens without you knowing it. One of these girls was sitting and talking. They was on their foot. They sitting on their leg. You ever sit on your leg? And your foot goes to sleep? <laughs> it's eventually under toe, secretly. You really don't know nothing about it. <laughs> now, if it felt that way when you sat on it, you probably wouldn't do that. But after a while, you wake up to what's going on. How many of you want to wake up to what the devil has put you off to sleep? How many of you want to wake up to what the enemy is taking the blood out of? Amen. Number one. Y'all ready for number one? Ooh. Man, this is one of my favorite. Problem one. Trying to live in the opinions of others. You better be living in the opinion of God. Well, you know, we, we, we go over and, and if somebody says something, you start getting up. You don't know because of somebody's opinion. Let me tell you, opinion is just that. It's a view or it's a, judge, it's a judgment. It's, it's a, a, about something. But you know what it is? In the understanding, in the definition, meaning not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. You know, we've took a lot of opinions that were not based on any information. We're not fact. Y'all listening to me? And we just went on with him. We just went on with him. Amen. Tell the story of the boy on the bicycle. I'm waiting for the bridge to come down. I'm waiting for the bridges. And I'm down in, in Lafouche Parish. And if you're going anywhere, you'll go across the bridge eventually. Amen. So I'm sitting there and the guy's there. And I ask him about going to a certain place. He pedaled that bicycle up. He stopped. He's looking. I said, well, well, over here at so-and-so place. We'd heard about it. We he looked at me and looked back up at that bridge up and looked back down that road and looked at me. He said, well, you can't get there from here. Right then, I knew he was lost. <clears throat> and you know what he did? After that conversation, he turned that bicycle around and went back the way he come from. He not only was trying to convince me, he convinced himself that he couldn't get there from here. Amen. <sighs> you know, you live in the wrong opinions, amen. You know, an uh, uh, old man's opinion is, uh, you know, once told me, the old man told me that opinions are kind of like uh, armpits. He said, most people got two of them. So they got the one for me and you, then they got that for you, then they got the opinion for me, then they got opinion. But he said, they're like armpits, and most of the time they stink, he says. <laughs> so see, some opinions stink. Some opinions, opinions are not that. You know, you know how it happens? You, you're just feeling good about your life or what you're doing or, or what you bought or what you're investing in or, or what you're getting excited about and, and what God spoke to you and what things are possible. Then here comes the voice of opinion. I'm talking about the voice that's never received anything from God. I'm talking about the voice that wouldn't know him if he walked up. I'm talking about the voice, come on, that's going to let everything run roughshod over them. And here comes the unpaid for opinions. Amen. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that. Now you start questioning what you've done because here comes the power of opinion. Here it comes. Or they'll say something like, like uh, I would have never done that for them. Y'all hear those opinions coming? They're starting to shake. Then you start going, well, I'm just trying to help him out. I wasn't trying to do nothing. I just, helped him. I just left the Lord. Now, this opinion's got you where, where, where you would never want to do that because somebody else. Never base who you are or what you do on what other people do. You do what you are and who you are in Christ Jesus because the Word of God leads you that way. <laughs> Amen? You're sitting there, why would you do that? Why would you hold them? Why would you buy anything like that? I'd never buy that. Y'all listen to me? <laughs> I'd have never gave that much money. I'd never give them people money. Well, really, they're telling you I don't give people money. They're telling other people that, 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 that I don't do for people. 
Y'all listen to me? That voice, come, that come up and say that, that. Like I'd never forgive them for that. I don't know how you could even forgive them. But I just don't know if I could get past them. Here comes that voice of opinion. Here it comes, that, that opinion from others. And it begins to shape people. And they begin, even when they're doing good, that voice of opinion comes up and tries to lead us away from the truth of the Father and what is written in this book for me. I've been shaped up. I'm to be like him and forgive those who do me wrong. I am called to help, though. Come on. Now, I know I'm smart, half smart as some of you. And, and, and I know some people you can't help. I'm half smart as some of you. Come on. And some of them say that he's pretty smart if he's half as smart as me. <laughs> Come on. He said, well, I've not done so and so. And, uh, uh, you know, what, whatever. Th th they'll put the place there. You know what people do? People are, are the same people that they're selfish and they have confidence in themselves and not in God. And they have an opinion. And anytime you're moving away from being like them, they'll call you out why you shouldn't be. Oh, here they'll come. You'll try to help somebody. He said, I tried to tell you that. Do y'all know how many people failed God? you know how many people didn't hold the, hold the row and keep the plow straight that, that tried to serve God? It's a lot of them. Let me tell you, if you make a little mistake, and it does show out that, that maybe it wasn't a great idea, you keep flowing and you keep moving and you keep going because you're made and wonderfully made inside. And he knows you. He got you fixed up. He's got a way that you should be. And we can't let people's opinions form us. I seen a watermelon that was grown in a square box. Now, that was a crazy looking watermelon. But let me tell you what it didn't do. It didn't roll off the counter. But you know what they did? They put it in and forced it to go into the shape of the opinion. That they wanted it to be. You know, sometimes, you know, how many times you ever heard you've been put in a box? Yeah, here we go. Amen. Then you think outside the box. You know, because listen to other people's opinions just do that drive you off. It happens like this. And other people, they approve. Everything's good. You, you're, you're having a good day if people approve. <laughs> you're doing great. And when people disapprove, you feel like you're less. You begin to question your, 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 your deal. You begin to question your decisions, what I mean. That people become, and you know what they do? Looks at me, and I'm getting closer on that one. People become servants to other people's opinions, and I want you to think about CNN. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You get on one thing, and, and, and they're they still talk, talking terrible. You look on the other thing, and people are talking different. You know, you, it's just about what you want to receive and what you want to hear. I don't have time to filter all that stuff out. I'm going to get away from it when it starts. I've been watching something since when I changed. I said, they starting that. Boom. I didn't even want to wait for something else. I'm going to get on past it. Amen. You, you'll never truly have what you have in Christ with the opinions of people and life and the devil and situation of people and what people think. You'll never have. What God won't say. I'm written in the book. He got something for me. I'm unique and complete. Come on. I may not see it and you can't see it, but I'm going to go ahead and believe it. Can you see me? Opinions. Get caught up in that stuff. And people say, oh, I don't know what that's about. Well, uh, you know, I know some people like you. I know some people. Uh, I've been people like you. I didn't believe it ever happened. And uh, yeah, it did happen. Can you say amen? You know, and, and listen to here's a, You ready for this? Y'all write this down because this is like, man, info, information. You ready? Until you stop caring about what people think and care more about God's opinion, you'll do a lot better. Amen. We probably did that one first and got out of here early. I don't know. You know, try, trying to please somebody uh, with every decision is useless. Every part of my look at me. You are not responsible for other people's lives. How I many you believe that? Well, their opinion is not responsible for your life. We say something, you're doing real good, you hear it, and then it starts retarding you. It starts pulling you back. It starts taking you away from you. You know what God wants you to do is go forward. He wants you to be free, and then the sun sets free is what? Free indeed. And we need to be free from wrong opinions. I'm not them. I don't want to be them. And probably nobody wants to be me but me. But let me tell you, there's nobody better at being me but me. I'm going to let you know. Amen. 
People always fail when they, when they try to live in other people's opinions. You see, try to do what other people are doing. Well, they'll do something, said they'll do this. People open themselves up. We're going to go down there, and we're going to do so-and-so. We're going to do that. And said, what do you think about it? Well, no, I wouldn't do that. I would. And they got a totally different plan about it. Now you've about left your plan. You understand that you not much about their plan, but you're leaving the God plan, the God design. Come on, you. Because somebody's opinion, somebody come up. Well, I don't believe that happens anymore. It doesn't for you, but it does for me. Amen. You know, the best way to, it, it, this, is, this is a big clue. Be who you are in Christ Jesus. Be your individuality. Now, if that that's, it works for them, that's good for them. If drinking battery acid, good for them, let them drink it. <laughs> but let me know what glass you're using. Amen. 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 But it's best to hold to your individuality. It's best, it, how many of y'all know look, what I'm saying is that the Bible says that we are a many-membered body. It don't say we many members that look like the same in the body. So if the members are different, the opinion should be different, but the opinion should be of your own. And what, that your opinion is the only one that counts in your life. But people do not understand that. They wait on other people's opinions and what people say and, and what they do. Now, let me tell you what. Now, if I'm going to buy a washing machine, I'm going to look at a few opinions. I'm going to buy some tires. I'm going to look at a few opinions. they call called reviews nowadays. Amen. And there is safety in, in counsel. There is. But you see those squelching opinions, those, those opinions that not, do not want us to move from where we are, those opinions that try to squelch the one that I have and take on theirs is, is really not the one you need at all. Can somebody say amen? You'll never be who you true. Well, you'll never experience what you truly have in Christ until you learn to shut out opinions and what the other people say. Well, if that was me, I'd be so, do so and so. No, I've heard people say, "Oh my." They said, if I, was, if I was Sarah, I wouldn't do that. Listen, if you were Sarah, you'd do the same thing Sarah was doing. So you got to understand, you know. No, you just don't do that, you know. Until you stop caring about what people think and start giving more care about what God thinks and God's opinion to change your life. You know, somebody look at him and say, this look good. It looks pretty good. Well, it looks okay to go change. Now, some men need to go change. I understand that. But not, not all men need to get up and go change. Amen. But, you know, until people give a care and they begin to start longing for the opinion of God, things will change. When, when they stop, things will change. You know, you got to try. You know, everybody got to make a decision to stay with what the Word of God says. The Word of God needs to be my opinion and what God said for me. Can somebody say Amen. People always fail when they live in other people's opinion. People always lose their way. People will lose their individuality. People will lose who they are listening to other people or the wrong people. No, even, even right people, good people, Holy Ghost filled people, people we trust, sometimes their opinion is not the correct opinion for your life. I don't believe they're trying to hurt you. I don't believe, no, I don't, you know. But I do believe that, that sometimes uh, uh, even people with good, good intentions bring a bad opi opinion of what it is. You want my opinion about it? No. Thank you. <laughs> I've never really stopped anybody about it. You ever stopped anybody? That's, that's the problem right here is we don't stop them. I said, well, you know, we know what I think about that. No, I don't care. <laughs> well, it counts on if you're not thinking like me. <laughs> I mean, you understand what I'm talking about. And this is probably my favorite one, you know. This one it took me years to find out. Amen. Number two, giving back, getting back power over my feelings. Ooh, Brother Jerry's going to talk about his feelings today. It ain't going to take long. Amen. No. no. How many of y'all know that, that we give people power over our feelings? You know, live, live in real victory. And if you want to have real victory, you cannot allow people's situations in life to have charge or be in charge of your feelings. We were taught we shouldn't have none, and I understand because some people couldn't control them. So the best thing to do is tell them don't have them, maybe. You know? Now, if you're waiting uh, for people and life to make you happy, you in for a very long wait and a very, uh, 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 that is the word, disappointing life. You know how I many you know that? You can't wait on nobody to make you happy. 
You can't wait on anybody to do that. You know that? Well, I'm just trying to keep the peace. Let me be. I, I, I am a peacemaker and keeper as much as I can. But some people do not want peace. Some people don't want those things. Some people, so, so some, not even that is good. You got to look to God. You know what? Whenever a person, oh my goodness, oh my, when a person is in charge of your happiness and love beside you, you're in the wrong situation. I didn't say you need to leave your marriage. I didn't say you need to get a new right. You, you didn't listen to me. I said you're in the wrong situation. Come on. People are not. I don't know what I'd do. And, you know, some people can't even live their life waiting on somebody to love them. The, the one that loved you gave his life for you and died for you and built you up in the wound and caused you to come forth who you are. And now because he or she or they don't have enough sense to love you, and now you're worth and all you are and your feelings are down? Don't you ever let a man be in charge of your happiness or a woman. Don't let anything be in charge of your excitement, your peace. Let, let nothing be in charge of your joy, your desire to, to search and live for God, to commune with him. Your confidence, your, your, your optimism and all that you are. Don't let that come from somebody else. Let it come from him. Because as soon as they stop, you fail. Be in charge of your feelings. Let me know that. I ain't not in charge of my feelings. They don't make me feel loved. They don't make me feel uh, unwanted. They don't make me feel rejected if it's costing me. Some people, oh, I just do it because I love you. Well, look, you love me enough. Let me go. <laughs> but you know, some people, if, if they don't have this and don't have that, and not, that not, you're not careful, you'll let people get. How I many of you know people get over your feelings? Amen. Come on. And you know who, let me, here, here it comes. You know who gave him power over your feelings? You did. You did. You know, you got to get to that place to understand that, that 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 is in your head and that they reject you. Nobody rejected you but you. Nobody sees you unloved but you. Nobody sees you without value but you. Come on. You got to get to that place. I may not look, oh, that's mine. Now you have to get you a no, and this is mine. I may not look like much, but I cost a lot, amen. <laughs> the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords died for me, and you got to get your power back to your feelings. Oh, when, you know, I just, uh, I just get so mad when they do. Hold on now. <laughs> you letting them be charged up over your feelings. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Don't let people be over you. Any of those things. You're, you can't look to man for those things. You've got to look to God for them things. And when people have the power over your feelings, we'll, we'll no longer have power over what God's feelings is in our life or what God feels for our life. People end up feeling dejected. People end up uh, uh, feeling like I can't live up to the, being them. That's right. You cannot live up to being them. You know what people want you to be? Just be who Christ designed you to be. Be who you are in him. Can somebody say amen? Amen. In a world, uh, you know what the devil wants to do? People, Satan, the enemy, the world, life. You know what they want to do? They want to control the inside stuff. You listening to me? People think, people think the devil's outside controlling things. No, that, bud, that, that dude's inside controlling things. Well, people want to. You know, that's what, you know that 25, about 25% 25 of Jesus' ministry was dealing with demons, casting out demons? It's a spiritual problem. Well, let me say that again, but I'll go over here and say it. <laughs> you know 25% of Jesus' ministry was dealing with demons. So likewise, we ought to deal some of those things like they're demons. They didn't take it near as good as y'all. So anyway, amen. You know, when you do that, and you know what the enemy wants to do? Control inside things like loss and self-pity. The enemy wants to control things like worry and doubt and sorrow, guilt. Come on, jealousy, confusion, sadness. That's what he wants to control. And that's the feelings that they want to control. Now, are you getting a clue that, that, that it, our emptiness or anger or bitterness, those are not the things that God wants you to feel. Those are not the things that, that, that God has intended for us to feel. And that all the above things that are good, you fool around and look in the wrong places for them. Looking for love in all the room. I don't know about a song about that, ain't it? Places. Yeah, I did that. I, I remember when I was, uh, 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 thought I was uh, 
a cowboy. I got a belt and a buckle. I got on one of them bulls. They did it around like that. About that time they did that, my hat went over there like that, and he come back there, and I was laying on top of my hat next time. I, know. I got up, punched that hat out, put it on my head, throwed the hat away. <laughs> Sometimes you just ain't a cowboy. I can't see me. <laughs> But, you know, you you got to quit allowing people to be over your feelings. So, uh, well, you, some of you sat around and wait and see what kind of day other people's in. Don't let it affect your day. Don't let it affect what it is. You know what? They're the Lord know your feelings. You know, when I was a kid, I, I, I was loud, if y'all can believe that. I, y'all probably thought I was really, like, shy <laughs> in the corner. But, you know, sometimes they tell me to be quiet. Sometimes they tell me stuff. You know, after a while I got in my life, I started listening to people. And I was a grown man when I found out they were squelching who I was. I'm going to go ahead and be noisy. You don't like noisy, you might not go to the other room. Amen. And if it's very much fun goes on there, I'm coming to that room. So get used to it. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, he wants you to do that. The enemy wants to control things. You know, when you give people power, that, that people don't care if you're happy or you're sad, only that they get what they want. They don't care. Believe it. Believe me. Amen. You know, and people end up feeling dejected. They fill up these things when you let people have that control. Amen. <laughs> You remember the man of God, he went down there and said, oh, that there would be a man of God that would tell we could talk to. He said, yeah, they all got one in prison. He said, oh, don't get him. He'll talk against us. You know, the enemy does not want you to hear the truth. You are loved and highly favored. You're the king's kid. He gave himself for you. And if nobody else but me and you, us and they, that's it. he would have took what he got. Can you say amen? See, we serve the king, that, that, but you've got to quit allowing people to be over your feelings. You know, all those above things are, are not like God. So in that book, in that design that God had for me, it's none of those negatives in my design. All those are the negative for the devil's design. You see, when we get to that place, you've got to take back. Y'all listening to me? You've got to take back what doesn't belong to them. And they give us opinions. We got to take our own back with God's opinion and get out, flush out some of that stuff that's not like him and say after him, amen. And, and take your feelings, come on, and cause them to be that the father and be healed up and move on and, and, and have a correct mindset. You know, if you got your mind stayed on the Lord, you won't think about a lot of other things. I tell you two things you can't do. You can't worry and praise at the same time. You can't worry and praise at the same time. You can't complain and praise at the same time. Somebody listen to me. You, you can't do those things. And the enemy, you know what he wants to do? He wants us to have what he has, which is nothing, which is away from the Father, which is not a peace, which is not of joy. And sometimes you, you, if you're not careful, you, you let the world and life and things happen to you. Oh, I, are you ready? This is for a person in here. You say something like this. I used to be so outgoing and so different when I was a young, young or when I was growing up and this, that, but this happened and so and so. So you've let that form you. you just, I thought they were about to tell me how sweet a person, how good a life they love living. But when I was about 15, they took that away from me. I've been living in misery. Well, some people live in misery all their life. I want to live in peace and joy and success, health and wealth. Can somebody say amen? Give the Lord a big hand clap if I can. And I'm getting close, amen, because I ain't going to get it all done today. It started with this. Living in the excuse of because. You got to get away from that because. Why don't y'all do something? Well, because. Why don't y'all get up and go to church? Because. Why don't... <laughs> You know, people use because, and they spend a lot of time with that. You know, you should never give the power of an excuse called because because of something didn't happen in your life. You know, people will say because all kind of things. Because becomes the very reason to not move from where people are. People live in, and because, and it becomes a convenience to them or out of convenience. You know, people label themselves with because, and they don't worry about doing anything because they have lack in their, lack in their life, and because, I'm not going to try because. I don't have to forgive them because. 
I don't have to change because they like that. Some people will say, you know, at least I'm better than them. Let them come here with that self-righteous demon and let's get that out of you. You ain't no better than them. They ain't no better than you. They might, you might have a little something on lockdown ahead of me, but you're no better. Come on. You know, it enab- you know what you know what because does? It enables people. It enables people to do nothing. I know a guy, I love him to death, a friend of mine, good, good, know him all my life. He was in an accident from a young age, lost an eye. And he's bitter about that. And every time something happens about moving on, changing, getting a job, doing there, doing that, well, when that tire blowed up, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, 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 can't, I can't never because. I have 15 pieces of land, give his kid $100,000 in money, and you, you can't be unsuccessful and not have that. I said, you can't be unsuccessful and have that. Amen. And he got the pity part. Let me tell you what. He uses because why he don't succeed. People, why they don't get a job, they because. People don't forgive because. People don't want to just because. How many times you've heard that? I heard people say, well, I have just because. Because I do with nothing. You know what because is? Because, remember last week we talked about limits. Maybe that was Sunday or a week ago. We talked about limits. Limit beca- uh, because becomes a limit. Well, why don't you forgive them? Well, because, why don't you do this? Because, why don't you know? Because is something that people use as an excuse. Well, why don't you just uh, uh, because? Why don't you take a new direction? Just because. And as soon as people use the word because, it becomes a belief system for them. And we ain't gonna try just because, you know. You know because. Well, what's the reason? No, this is what they'll tell you. No real reason, just because. And they're stuck. They can't move forward. They are over there. And I'm guaranteeing you that they're probably out of the, the very feelings we talked about and the, uh, uh, point, the uh, opinions of others and their feelings has brought them to the place of because. Because they did that, because they made me feel that, because I don't have that. Why don't you do that? Well, I'm going to start going to church when I get some new shoes. Well, come on down here and wear your sandals. Amen. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> because, you know, because just uh, of things, it keeps people from uh, just saying, you know, having no true reason what they do. And as soon as people use that excuse, as soon as that becomes a system for them, as soon as that, they really rely on that reason, and that reason because becomes their reason. Why not because? You know, I can't get a job because there's no jobs out there that I won't. (laughs) Well, join the club. Very few people had the job. <laughs> the, the, come on. They said if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Some of you still working. <laughs> but, you know, if you get good at your craft, and you hone your skills, and you wise up, and you learn how to develop, you can be happy most anywhere that you are. Get ready to make a move. If, you, if that's not where you don't be because of that, that you know, you know what? I'm going to get up this morning and use it in the positive because God's got a job for me. I'm going to get up this morning because God's got a future for me. Amen. People find the because in the negative but not in the positive. Can somebody say amen? You know what it does? Because becomes the reason to simply not try. I don't have to try if I'm in the because. I don't really do relationships because I got hurt. I really do not try to move on in my life because nobody wants me. Come on, y'all. You know, all that stuff inside. Let me tell you, there's somebody who wants you. There's somebody looking for you. There's a supernatural, come on, get together by God. But we want to look this way, taste this way, and look like you'll never see her looking at her. You'll never see her looking at her. See, lots of things you didn't obtain, come on. 
You know, as long as people tell themselves something and using because up in the middle, they will never really, really get past where they are. How I many you want to get past where you are? Yeah, oh, I, I can't do it because. I, I, well, I, I'm trying to forgive them, but, but I tell you, it's a, because of all the stuff I've been through when I was a kid. I've been through stuff when I was a kid, too. Other people have been through stuff when I, they was a kid, too. Listen to me. There's kids going through stuff right now. And what answer we give a young man like this because? He needs answers. I said he needs answers. That's one of the worst ways you answer kids. Why can't we get ice cream? Because. No, because it's really this. You don't want ice cream, but me and this boy want ice cream. It's your business, brother. If you don't want ice cream, but Pete, we're going to get ice cream. Why are we not going? Because. Why do Why don't we go back to church over at CCC? Because we wrong and we don't want to make it right. No, I I made that up. No, I didn't make that up. But anyway, because. Can you see how opinions and feelings begin to sure up because? Because they rejected me, because because they don't love me. We just think about Jesus. He's gonna heal the heal the sick, raise the dead, walk on water, heal the blind, cast out the devil, and they hung him on the tree. And now because they look at us wrong. <laughs> I said now because they look at us wrong. Amen. I mean you know that that God has a plan for us, and that plan for God has for us is get us past opinions. I say get us past opinions. Get us past negative feelings or even good feelings. That God, I could never find nobody to love me like it. Let me tell you, God loved you more than any man could ever love you. God loved you more than any woman could ever love you. See, when you get the God man and the God woman together, we, I'll tell you, we got a God get together. Can you see me? But we got to get past. I want you to stand with me this morning. You got to get past this morning the opinions of people. Life and the devil that have kept you back and you've accepted their opinion. You know, I found out some things just really wasn't true. I said, I found out some things in life just really wasn't true. I found out that I am all that and a big bag of chips. I tell you, I'm, I'm a big bag, baby. I'm a king side, family side bag. Can you say amen? Now, if I listen to them, you have them little old, little old two chips in a, in a, uh, uh, sitting on a uh, stamp. And there's your meal. No, that ain't it. Amen. You got to get past the opinions who we are. They they get about opinions. Do you understand how much danger that that our youth is in in social media? Because it thrives on the opinions and the feelings and brings them to the because. I got to be worthless because they said this about me. I got to be no good because they didn't like me. I think the only reason that they don't put a thumbs down on social media is that we'll have mass suicide. They give me a thumbs down. Let me tell you what, and not worried about the one who can save you, the one in what he said and what he said about you. You're marvelously made. I'm knit together. He put me together, and I know that right well. You got to know right well that God didn't put you together with anger. God didn't put you together with selfishness. God didn't put you together with rejection. God didn't put you together with those things, the opinions of men and why they want me to feel. He said, I love you. He loved you with a supernatural love. When you were yet in your sins, he died for you. When you didn't know him, he knew you. David says, I'm unformed. It's, It's just me. It's just getting together. And you can't tell anything from anything but he knows my shape he knows who I am he knows how he wants me to be and I guarantee you that God doesn't want me designed after the opinions of men wrong feelings and trying to live in the because of these you know as as long as you tell yourself and use things like feelings and use things accepted opinions use things like the because you'll never try to use the word you'll never hold to what the word says now look at me real quick and I'm going 
How much of that stuff you tried, brother, and it seemed like it didn't work? You know why it didn't work? Because you took hold of the because before you got there. You got hold of it. Come on. You got to believe it's going to happen. You got to believe that God's working on your behalf. You got to believe when it talks in here about people, he's talking about you. He talking about me. I said, Brother Jerry, you've got a pretty good high opinion of yourself. But let me tell you what, it was not always this way. You see, I was born again, and I began to live in, and I began to find out the schemes of the devil, and I began to find out that opinions and feelings and such things were taking me from the Father, not to the Father. Oh, he'll justify you. You know, we're going to be here next week. We're going to talk about unjustified feelings. Unjustified. You know, I mean, you can be justified some things, but you, you, you can be, uh, you justify some things you are not justified. This morning, how many of y'all see? Opinions, workers, opinions did. Stuck in the feeling. They're not in charge of those. Who's in charge of your feelings? Y'all better say it louder than that. I said, who's in charge of your feelings? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You are in charge of them. Some of y'all say, oh, I don't know, Brother Jerry. Uh, wait a minute, you know. You know what? Some of you get, get all, uh, all broke out over a pair of socks on the floor. Get, get all worked out. The neighbors won't get his trash can in. <laughs> Please. What is the deal? He said that this trash one Wednesday and here it is Friday. And he ain't got that trash can in you. And I'm going to use because. Because he's an idiot. <laughs> but you know that, that that's the truth. They're shaping us. They've been shaping us through the media. It's called opinion. We get hung and wanting people. Look at me. Nobody in this room can validate you. I said nobody in this room can validate you. You hear me, Sister Ellen? Nobody in this room can validate you but God. And don't you let nobody try. You know what we've done? We've let them. I said we let them. It must be so because they said it. Now we begin to see it. And that's the thing. You, mm, it's not so. You are the king's child. You are marvelously made. God made you in secret. Can you imagine that? So secret it ain't telling the devil. Amen. So secret he's not telling life. So secret. It's between you and he how he wants you to be. Your individuality. Isn't that good? I'm encouraged this morning to tell you it's going to be all right. We're going to take back what they ought not have. And I'm going to take back my feelings. I'm going to take back my opinion. And I'm going to get rid of because. And I'm going to live in the power of Christ as might. Can you see? Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. We proclaim the power of the cross. And we thank you, Father God, this day, Father God, if anyone does not know you as personal Lord and Savior, and I'm not talking about just went along with the crowd. I'm talking about had an internal, internal change. I ask, Father God, that you touch them today, Lord, that they'll come and we'll talk with them, Lord. They'll repent and serve you. Today, Father God, we thank you for this church. We thank you as we move forward, Lord. We just move over, Lord God, from to the left lane and to the right and correct lane. And we're going to go forward and we're going to see the high-hanging fruit, Father God. But you're going to make a way up that we pick. And today, Father God, we thank you for straightening us out, Lord, that we don't live in the opinions of others. We want to live in your will, your opinion. We want to live in the designed us. Father, we don't want to live in, in a life that they're in charge of feelings. That we want to live a life that you're in charge. And Father, we don't want to live in an excuse of because and do nothing. But we're going to do it because you said. Today, Lord, we ask you to heal, deliver, set the captive free, touch everyone under the sound of my voice. And I thank you for healing, Lord. I thank you for peace and joy. And today, Father God, we just ask you to touch our fellowship. Touch those that are missing, Lord. Those that are sick at home. And God, we ask you to touch them. Heal them up. And we thank you, Lord God. And we ask you to touch this fellowship. We just bless the food in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father God, for just preparing a way this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.